the 21st of May, 2022. So make sure to go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, also www.ladydorybell.com, same website. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and like and share my official YouTube videos. Here to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. So I've gone over a few things in reference to my scuba diving. I kind of figure this particular outfit might be a little bit more befitting for those who understand that particular reference regarding the coloration in regards of the water at the depth level that I have been and well been getting closer to the surface of the water after my descent in regards to the USS USNS Vandenberg or General Hoyt S. Vandenberg. So those who may know in comparison to others, so in the month of August 2009 it's a little bit of an issue regarding the dates because of a few factors, partially because of the amount of time, additionally because of the amount of work, and then there's the aspects as to, well, between my son and my daughter's school compared to my personal work. So I'm going to go a little bit backwards comparison to the normal season going forward, particularly for certain details that are kind of important. So, reference to August of 2009 compared to this year of 2022, I had learned that the General Hoyt S. Vandenberg was going to be sunk in the Florida Keys area. Now, when I arranged the trip, I had to make sure that I would be back in time so that way my son and my daughter could go to their school, which began at the end of August in 2009 for that particular school year, in comparison to the actual trip itself, which was in the beginning of August in 2009. So the Vandenberg had been sunk to assist creating an artificial coral reef to assist in replenishing the oceanic waters. And that's a very small little bit about that. Now, anybody who has certain backgrounds has certain knowledges in reference to why naval vessels regarding the military are named the way they are. It's not just because of paying homage to certain individuals. There has a lot more planning in regards of. So what the particular carrier has, what the particular size, as well as a few other factors in regards of the interior capabilities as well as what it can carry in reference to those particular loads across the waters, the various power systems that are involved in regards of, in conjunction to the representation of. So for those who have looked into who General Hoyt S. Vandenberg had been, he had been involved with quite a few different programs that are known in the military, which, of course, anybody who knows anything in regards to the military, each of the branches work together at some point in time. So the Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, and the Navy, at some point in time, usually crosses and works together in conjunction with other branches and divisions. Sometimes you have certain types of dot, dot, dot guys working with non dot, dot, dot guys. And sometimes you just have dot, dot, dot guys only working with dot, dot, dot guys. And other times you have non dot, dot, dot guys working with non dot, dot, dot guys. I'll leave it at that for 
individuals to kind of leave. I'll, I'll, I'll give that leeway in those references. So I, I was informed. In the, I, if I remember correctly, sometime around May, maybe April or March, about the Vandenberg situation. And because I was born and raised in New Jersey and had begun my scuba diving the way I had, I knew that in order to take care of certain things as per my childhood and my teenage years, there was going to be some work that I needed to take. So upon finding out that the Vandenberg was being sunk in the Florida Keys, I began doing all sorts of preparation regarding what work I was going to have to take care of. Now, in reference to the day before going to the Vandenberg, I took my son, my daughter, and my niece on a dolphin excursion. And they were capable to go on a, a smaller boat, of course, in comparison to the Vandenberg. <laughs> Just pointing that out there. To be capable to go out to a sand dune and do some snorkeling and go around in a boat, doing a little bit more viewing in that reference. And then there was a point when we snorkeled in an area where there were coral reefs. and. Having noticed a few things, and I took a few pictures of my niece and my son and my daughter at the surface when just wearing a life jacket. And when I noticed a few things, in the vicinity, you know, they, it was as it was. So I, uh, I, I, I informed my son, my daughter, my niece, and the captain of the boat that I was going to just do a quick little free dive. And so, that picture in regards of the manta ray and the coral reef, as well as the, if I remember correctly, a couple parrotfish, that, that had to do with just a free dive from the surface. Not an actual dive in utilizing the velocity, no, just a free dive, which is what my reference is in comparison to what it might translate to to other people. So at the surface when snorkeling, I informed and they knew and I just dove right down <laughs> freely. And it was as it was. My son and my daughter and my niece, I took them out to be capable to go see the school of dolphins. So I took my pictures when I was done, as I do. <laughs> it was as it was. And shortly after that snorkeling point in time, we got back in the boat and there was a school of dolphins that weren't very far off. And my son, my daughter, and my niece were capable to see dolphins in the wild. Mm -hmm. So that was as it was. So then the following day, it also was known that <laughs> I was in the area, so I can make the joke in reference to the, the rain that came out. And, um, you know, we got back to the dock before the water actually hit. And, uh, you know, it was as it was. In the following day, you know, they were exhausted from the <laughs> dolphin excursion. So by the time I got back from my work, they were technically still sleeping. <laughs> there was plenty of food in the, in the area. It was just, you know, they were exhausted because of the drive that I had done from Boca all the way down to the Keys and we got up fairly early of the distance to get there on time to go to the dolphin excursion. So, you know, they, were, they were tired and it worked out. So, I went to my scuba dive in regards of the Vandenberg and I've explained what happened on the surface of the water and in a very brief way um, when getting out there, I went to descend into the water after that and after
after I could begin to look upward to pay attention to where my assigned scuba dive buddy was, and then waited as more what have you's went in the water, so on and so forth. Well, when I started counting, I got to nine minutes, and then, you know, I surfaced. So, that is as it is. I, if you go to my website, www.susanmealing.com, there is the reference of the three-volume book series that I have available in the book section. So, you know, it was as it was. I surfaced. I was reeled in, and the first boat that had pulled me in, in comparison to the boat that I had been on, which was the Starfish Enterprise, the guys asked me what occurred, and I was concerned in reference to my scuba dive partner, and they said I wasn't going to get in trouble for that, that wasn't a concern of theirs, and I was okay. And so <laughs> I informed them about landing at the bottom and all that sort of stuff-ish, you know, within, within reason. And so then they made the radio call to the boat that I had gone out from on. They sent someone over to come pick me up and take me back over to the original boat and told them what occurred. And they said similarly that there wasn't anything for me to be concerned about except, you know. So there was that. And so it went the way it did, you know. So it was as it was. And so the Vandenberg, it's there. <laughs> so uh, I, I learned that Vandenberg, or General Hoyt S. Vandenberg, had been a part of the irony of ironies. <laughs> the Big Blue Book. <laughs> or the Blue Book Project, however you want to put it. So that, that's my... I made, I created, see, I, I made a joke and see colors. And so, <laughs> but this part, you definitely couldn't see the red in the water because of the depth level. So, so um, <laughs> nonetheless, before then had been the Boca scuba dive out from Parrot Bay and found a few forming underwater volcano areas and stuff like that. And then before then, I had gone on a few scuba dives in reference to some aspects of the state of Texas area, which was after having been out to the Gulf of Mexico and taking care of stuff out in the Cancun area or Cozumel aspects. So in this particular reference, there were two other females on this particular trip in June of 2009. And I got along with one. Uh, she was dating or married to a male. I can't remember his name. And uh, not to be rude, just as it is. And then there was Sally with Jeff, and Jeff had been a scuba dive instructor of mine before. He knew how long I had been working on the aspects in the references of the amount of scuba dives that particular year, because time in scuba diving is different than in reference to linear aspects. So scuba diving time has to do with how many hours, how many scuba dives. So it's literally scuba diving. It's that in-person, in-the-water aspects. And so she, meaning Sally, had been informed, apparently, of a lot of the work that I had been doing. And in the DFW airport, there was a bit of a situation to where I simply excused myself to go smoke a cigarette outside because I just really didn't want to deal with that. Really came to that aspect, which is an irony because my assigned scuba dive partner was a smoker, so it kind of worked out. So we went outside as Sally and Jeff, Joy and what have you, kind of worked out whatever situations that was in comparison. And so 
just prepared myself because I knew I had a lot of work to do on my friends to the Gulf of Mexico. And so I went and took care of that, prepared myself and those references because there was a lot of work that I was going to have to do. I didn't realize how much additional work I was going to have to do once in the water, though I took care of it as best as I could. And so the knowledge is that who I would, who had been assigned to me as my scuba dive partner had been in the front area along with everybody else. So the scuba dive tour guide and then the other five scuba divers were in front of me and I was in the rear as far as that's concerned regarding pretty much every scuba dive that went out from the boat. When the first day there though and having done the shoreline scuba dive I was still in the rear for those who understand that reference. And the two males Jeff Waters and, and the assigned scuba diver to me, uh, Sean Leonard, had both been way up ahead. They both watched me as I dropped down, landed at the bottom of that area. It wasn't like a shoreline area where you go to the beach for those who might be thinking differently in regards to that shoreline scuba dive. It literally was um, the edge of a cliff and then there's the water. That's that's what the reference is for that scuba dive. So I had dropped down and there's a really big eyed, um, I call it a, an octopus. It had only one eye though. And so but it tried to be a ninja hiding behind a coral reef and it could not. <laughs> It was quite amusing to watch that when in the water because as big as this <laughs> squid or octopus was, it just it tried to actually hide behind these huge coral reefs. And that would be the equivalent for a viewpoint for this lecture is me saying, okay, I'm gonna be right here in between these two doors. And I'm totally camo right now. <laughs> that was the equivalent of seeing this. Okay. <laughs> and it was literally one of those, you are the least camouflaging whatever species of whatever that I have ever seen in my existence. And I know how I look. <laughs> afraid of the mouse or is the mouse afraid of the elephant? <laughs> and I just looked over at this whatever <laughs> squid or octopi and just shook my head because I don't know how it thought that it could camo. And again, I know how I physically look. So... <laughs> Was about as camo as I am in front of this white door. <laughs> in my opinion. So, <laughs> and it did. It actually made attempts to do the coloration changes. And yet, at the same time, it just didn't fit behind the entire coral reef. So it didn't really work out so well. <laughs> Did not camo at all whatsoever. <laughs> Again, I right here in this lecture video am more camo than that species was. <laughs> I landed at the bottom, I looked up and I was like, hey! <laughs> 
<laughs> and they went like this. <laughs> and then I surf it. Well, I, I ascend it, I should say. <laughs> there was a sign along the um, wall of the area of the island. Uh, I think Quinta Rue or something like that, whatever number, and that was, that was around my um, safety stop <laughs> regarding the, the depth level difference, so you know, it was as it was, so the other two were kind of in front of me, and I was up in the, I was in the rear, and again, paying attention to the lack of camo regarding <laughs> As it was, it was a very large species, and it was one of those I can't back up far enough to actually get a picture of because of how large it was. <laughs> it's a huge squid, and so I were octopi, whatever species. And I just oh, you know, you know, there you are, right there. <laughs> Did not camel. I don't know if it was really even trying after a while. Really don't. I don't think it was because it just kind of, <laughs> kind of like a dog. It kind of rolled over, and there was just <laughs> the eyeball, <laughs> which is an irony because in the Jewish tradition they have a singular eyeball, and <laughs> I found it <laughs> on whatever species it was. I can make the joke, I guess. And since I had officially began my scuba diving because of a Jewish medical journal, I can genuinely make that joke. Because when you think of how the one googly eye sort of what have you of whatever species it was, is a perfect circle. Just as similar as that symbolic aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> it was gentle though. It was like a great Dane. <laughs> So the next day was the 
evening scuba dives and those particular references regarding when I was hovering just a few inches above the bottom floor of the Gulf of Mexico is where I took that picture of the, um, what was it, the uh, seahorse, as far as I was concerned, and because it was at night, the colorations were obviously, and then also the, the depth level, that's the other reality, I <laughs> mean, I only had a 12 megapixel C uh, Pro camera, and it only had a 4 millimeter optical zoom and 10 millimeter digital zoom total. So that's, that's what I had as far as the scuba diving gear for my pictures. And so that's how close to the area I had been in comparison. So during one of the dinners on Coast Mount area, Sally Jeff Waters' girlfriend at the time had said she had noticed that I had tattoos. And I said, yes, I do. Now, mind you, I did not have these at that point in time. I had this one, this one, that one, that one, although this is a bit redone, same with that one. I did not have this on the exterior, but there is one that you can see if you're more up close. And then this, but not this part. But I did have this. That were visible in the front area, and in regards to the back area, you were capable to see this tattoo, this tattoo, this tattoo, and well, there's one right here in regards of that you could see depending on the bathing suit that I was wearing. Otherwise, there were the ones in my leg areas that at the time of if my uh, wetsuit wasn't fully on. So if I, such as in the majority of time frames, when surfacing or going out to, I have the pants part of my Farmer John on and essentially around my waist and then the shorties as well and tied around my waist and then whatever portion of the bathing suit I was wearing at the time. My sunglasses while preparing myself in reference to the work that I had to take care of as best as I could. And so I, uh, I am an ordained reverend and I also by that time had earned as many scuba diving certifications as I had in that time frame. So on land after I think it was the second day, I think it was the second evening I should say, we went to dinner and Sally had brought up that she had noticed I had tattoos, and I said, yes, yes I do. And so she pulled up her, um, I don't remember which arm, actually I think it, no, it might have been this arm, um, she pulled up her sleeve on her short sleeve shirt and said, look, I have this. And internally, I wondered why that particular tattoo was as it was, and she decided to tell me that it was a tattoo for her mom. She hated her mom. She was in the process of looking to getting the tattoo removed, and yet she hated her mom. But she got the tattoo because of her mom, and it literally said mom. Well, because I know about tattoos, and because I obviously would know people in regards of tattoos, I had informed her that she had the four most difficult colors And she asked what I had meant, and I said, well, red, blue, green, and black are literally the most difficult colors. And anybody who has worked in this industry, please do have etiquette and respect and leave comments in the comment section of my official YouTube video regarding if I'm still accurate on that, regarding those particular four colors being that difficult to remove first tattoo removals. And so she tried to tell me she knew otherwise, and she knew plenty of people who did whatever the opinions were as far as that was concerned. And I informed her otherwise. She was not too happy with how I had informed her otherwise, because she thought that 
it would be like for a well, a high arm is not gonna. So it's about a five five and a half inch tall tattoo and about four and a half inches wide for the tattoo on her arm. And in red, green, blue, and black for those again who are in the industry understand that. She thought that she could get it removed in one session. And I informed her, which she did not like the truth, that it was going to take far more than five to ten sessions for that size, for the work that it would take, so on and so forth. She didn't want to believe me. She thought I was being mean. Those particular references. Because I told the truth. So it was as it was. And uh, so who was assigned to me as my roommate, that reference, had informed me of his opinion regarding Sally, which I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> because I grew up with quite a few certain similar traits as far as certain types of individuals. I would not be surprised if Sally got along with my biological sister, just as I would not be surprised if Sally got along with my ex-sister-in-law, most specifically Mary Evangelina Nichols Osteen. I would not be surprised in the slightest if those were the ones that they that got along with the most. And so it was as it was, especially those particular types of if you would like to call them personality traits. In that particular reference, so it was as it was, and in the airport reference of having flown out, the issue was because Jeff Waters had discussed me a bunch of times because of how many scuba diving certifications I was earning in the year of 2009. In addition, the amount of work and so on and so forth, he called me a bullfrog. Right before we went to Kings. Just saying. I am a human being. I understand that I'm not, you know. I, I obviously don't look as Miss Melania does, all right? I know that. So to think I was like that, great. Just saying, is as it is. So, anyway, I, I acknowledge, and I know that this is the year of 2022. That was in 2009. Just saying. I am a human being. <laughs> Something cuter than a bullfrog? Like, platypi are cute, they're fluffy. They're a little bit of anomaly-ish. They, they have um, absolutely so adorable. They have this little duck bill, they have these cute little, so happy, and then they have their little twisties and their little left little twisties and these little claws, cause you know, they're vicious, but they're so cute. And then they have a beaver tail that's just like, it's just so cute. <laughs> it's such a cute little, you know, I mean, it's, It's cute too. It's very 
much about myself. I'm just saying, period. I could tolerate the limo aspect ish and tadpole. Like a tad bit. You know? Yeah, no, that's fine. I could think of. details and it was well I don't really have the words for it first and foremost second it's really not your business to, not to be rude it's just not and third realistically shouldn't you just be glad that he's alive realistically and her response was a bunch of <laughs> And it was just the facts, though, that she should just be glad that he was alive. So should everybody at, at, in that realistic situation, because anybody who has intelligence, we were in a different country. We weren't in Texas. I know that there's the Texas, Mexico, what have you, from whatever century. However, we were in the country of Mexico. 
And so, realistically, if any of those five other scuba divers had really paid attention, especially during the year of 2009, um, <clears throat> the common sense factor that he was allowed to live and, and I was capable to assist with that should have been more important. Especially with each of those individuals knowing who they are, knowing their backgrounds, knowing what would be considered as valuable in comparison, especially in the reference of the fact that I'm just medically retired from the Army, I didn't graduate basic training, so compared to, I'm just me. And so they each know what their individual capacities are in comparison. And so being known as well as the facts of it being seen by the tour guide regarding the area. I didn't really understand why they really wanted to discuss that in an open area at that time. It was one of those, don't you think it would be more appropriate to discuss this, I don't know, in the United States of America? instead of this particular whatever restaurant we were at and she had alcohol so anybody who's been around individuals with alcohol she got louder and it was as it was and it was well, we could talk about that later you know again when we're in the united states of america you know <laughs> And so for, for anybody who wonders regarding certain viewpoints of certain individuals when they're in certain areas, um, those particular situations are because of those trust fund baby types that think that the you know, situations are the way they are in comparison. So naturally because even though i didn't graduate basic training i was born and raised in new jersey in the 1980s and 1990s so i paid attention so i was sitting at the end of the table with my back against the wall and i looked around and noticed a solid wall over here and sally was sitting over here and her voice was bouncing off the wall so looking over behind everyone else and noticing how her running her mouth, you know, this is probably why she'd get along with my biological sister Patricia and my ex-sisters and well, both of them by technicalities, or all three of them, but especially most likely my ex-sister-in-law Mary, both of them. Comparison. And so, you know, it was one of those, well, those types who don't have that common sense, don't have etiquette or intelligence, in my opinion, you know, aren't going to pay attention to those factors, because why would they? That would require intelligence and common sense. Other aspects in regards of decency and humanity and courtesy. Quite a few other factors. So instead, while I made attempts to remain calm as anybody who's been around those types, um, well, the voice with the additional aspects of the alcohol. And so just kind of paid attention to all of the staff that were walking by and all of the people in that part of the restaurant and knowing that this part had window areas and wherever that led to, you know, Sally's voice had been as it had been. Common sense. That importance as to safety and security. So that the following day was the police dive and then group of them decided to let the captain of the boat as well as the tour guide know that we were going to go on a keep trip around the area. 
So, you know, as anybody who, who pays attention to stuff like that, um, you know, really had to keep my eye out and pay attention to details and this is it is as far as that's concerned. So, you know, just a biological female looking as I do. Good thing I ran out of my hair color to um, maintain my hair color when I was in the area. Kind of worked out. So in comparison of looking for the bright red hair female with the pixie hairstyle, they were looking for a blonde instead because of the way my hair is in those references. And so in that regard, instead of the color, it was as it was. So and then I had my eyeglasses in comparison to my sunglasses, and it worked out better, I guess. And so <laughs> when I noticed certain things, it was, hey, let's go. <laughs> let's, let's get in the, how about we get in that Jeep and go for a drive somewhere else? So we went. <laughs> was as it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the way it did. Got back to U.S. soil, thankfully. And, you know, it was as it was. So then the situations in reference to the flight and the plane. Whatever it was as it was, and when getting back, um, there was a, a barbecue at Joy's house, Joy and her husband's house, in the DFW area, and Sally had been there as well, and then some of the people that Joy knew, and her husband knew, and even though it wasn't official at the time, you know, we, who was assigned to me as my scuba dive partner, I had arrived in the same vehicle, and the situations were at the time, and it was as it was. So, didn't really go into too much, though I was asked a lot of questions by a lot of people that were there. I didn't really understand why I was being asked a bunch of questions, to be honest. And I really think that compared to what it was supposed to be about, it made really all that much sense. It was references at the time. So it was just about their stuff. So when I was asked a lot of questions by a lot of people, it was really weird. I didn't understand. And so, it went the way it did, and um, then, it, you know, time went forward regarding other aspects of my scuba diving for the latter portions of. And so there are the situations after having surfaced regarding Vandenberg and receiving this mysterious set of phone calls from my ex-sisters-in-law and my ex-brother-in-law, how they were just really freaking out that, you know, they thought that I really, really needed to get my son, my daughter, and my niece to my ex-in-law's house. They really, really felt that it was important. They were really freaking out that I needed to get my niece and my son and my daughter to steal Alabama. In comparison, they, I don't know, you know, it seemed a little suspicious back then, as far as the hypotheticals, and then the situations in reference to stopping by after dealing with all three of them in regards of whatever their assumptions were, because they really did need to remember those dress blue problems, among a few other situations that they needed to accept, that they knew I was only awake from my coma 
for only a few months by the time of finding out I was pregnant with my son and that I was 17 years old. And therefore, as hypothetical, you should have paid attention to that. And so then there's the situations in reference to a blue ID card, which just so happened to be at the time frame that it was. And in the year 2001, and they needed to remember that they still do. Because especially with as many who have brought forward rights, you know, I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain until after Grandpa Nichols passed away. That's how long a subarachnoid hemorrhage had been in the frontal lobe of my brain in reference to MRIs and CAT scans. So there's that starting point that my ex-in-laws have needed to remember. And then there's the facts that they knew how young I was. And while, yes, Mary Evangelina Nichols Osteen and Susie Marie Nichols Lopez and Gail, whatever her middle maiden name in Nichols regards to the year of 2009, Sure, they may have, in their choices, had children at a younger age. Because of their choices, I was not that way. Just because I was born and raised in New Jersey. And so my work was to actually have a, my career in comparison to just having a child or two and just being the breeder. So, <clears throat> well, yes, there were some common traits because I had my son at the age that I had as a teenager and then my daughter when I was 20. However, um, my references for myself and what standards I have held myself to in the comparisons of is a difference, obviously. And so I did the best I could to explain to them in the earlier years of 2000 through 2008 that that just wasn't what I was looking at. And so the, the three of those females did try to, in some ways, when speaking with them, as to uh, something in common. However, I'm going to guesstimate the numerical portion here to look at different so far. And so, um, and life. I've made attempts to explain that there were differences as to goals. Those situations where in August of 2009, they had responded in that way immediately, how they thought that it was, it just seemed so suspicious back in August of 2009. I made attempts to explain to people throughout 2009 into 2010 into 2011 and 2012, and nobody saw anything suspicious other than me. And I didn't understand how nobody saw that as suspicious. However, I had my plans to go take care of my work, so obviously I went to go take care of my work. And I surfaced after my work. So it was as it was. So then I had returned back to the state of Texas after stopping in Alabama for a little while because you know the whining and the complaining from my ex and laws. And so then I had gotten back to the state of Texas and stopped along the way as I had and spoke with whom I spoke with along the way as I had. 
in the route that I went, because I had. And the GPS had it worked the way it had to get from Alabama back to the state of Texas. So instead of just going whatever seemed, what seemed like it would have been a normal aspect, I went through Tennessee to get back to the state of Texas. It didn't really make much sense. It was Alabama to, instead of Mississippi, it was Alabama to Tennessee, and then through to Arkansas, and then Texas, the misery of that Arkansas. Nonetheless, irony of irony, huh? And so it went the way it did. While I made attempts to explain to people, that would require them to actually take me seriously. The truth back then. However, since my biological sister and my biological mother and my biological father decided to make the choices that they had made in the time frame from 2000 through that point in 2009, and since my ex-in-laws had made the choices that they had made up to those points in time regards of what it was. And so it was known in the scuba diving community that I was dealing with what I was dealing with already by the time of August 2009. And so, you know, the situations were as they were in comparison. So, you know, was as it was. And I returned back and made attempts to discuss with some people that that would require being taken seriously. Seriously, now I didn't show up to locations just as I am. I show up in jeans and a t-shirt. And instead, it was whatever was paying attention to in comparison to the details and the truth as to how that was important. And so, but I had already been dealing with what I had dealt with up to that point in time. So. The obvious in regards of what would have been best for my son and my daughter and I, referencing 2009, would have been for my son, my daughter, and I to stay in my house and as a family. However, those situations went as they had gone. Apparently, hypothetically, McCoy Elementary School decided to make whatever decisions they had in comparison to speaking with me because I was the one and only person for them to speak with. So I informed them. However, whatever hypotheticals they had made without my permission and without my consent regarding these factors. And so then there's the situations regarding assigned scuba dive partner at the time and made attempts to speak with, which I had explained that he had run in comparison to being capable to take care of that in that capacity. And so while I made attempt after attempt after attempt after attempt, without hiding in comparison, straight forward to the point, Instead, the way the situations had been is the way the situations had been. Instead, it would have been best. Very sad. So, what would have been best is my son, my daughter, and I staying in my house that I created as our home. And instead, because of the culmination and the time frame of, with my house on the market and had to move to go take care of 
the situations because of being a single mom, a legal widow, and because of the situations in reference to my ex in laws caring more about their dead relative in comparison to life, it's the facts regarding, in addition to the way my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister had been in the state of Texas, because with their choice to have lied to the San Antonio pagan community, among others, despite the emancipation, there's a difference between being emancipated to join the army and the equivalent of being orphaned, the way they chose to, because of their own personal issues whatever hypothetical he said. And so, because of those choices and their ramifications of the facts, my ex-in-laws needed to remember that the truth was the truth, still is the truth. Same thing with my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister. They needed to accept the truth the facts. And so while their opinions were as their opinions were, the choices of translates to them not having any rights at all to anything involving my son, my daughter, or I because of their constant refusal during those time frames, even into the year of 2012. So, it's the facts. They don't have the rights. In addition, they put my son and my daughter in danger because of child endangerment laws and then the ADA violations that they chose. So, they have needed to accept responsibility for their incorrect actions, and the sooner that is made to be, the better. In my opinion, I acknowledge my bias. And so while, yes, I could go into certain details in reference to my scuba diving, I personally don't have that reason. I haven't actually ever had the reason to, to be quite honest. Because whereas I've made attempts before, I haven't had a reason to discuss it. My son and my daughter and my niece did not ever see me scuba dive because there is a difference between snorkeling and scuba diving, obviously. And so that would be common sense in those references. Additionally, in regards to the situations of my scuba diving, I haven't had the need to explain it. Personally, it's just the facts. And the reasons why I haven't had the need to explain it is because I haven't had anybody ask me. That's, that's kind of a big deal because with the way I was raised in comparison to my biological sister and hypothetically others, and this includes my son and my daughter because I would speak with my son and I'd speak with my daughter and I'd ask them about their day and I'd ask several questions throughout the time frame of that just didn't happen. So when I did make attempts to speak with people, the main thing they wanted to talk about was the surface in comparison to the depth of the truth. So only because of the 10 year point in time did I put stuff into writing in regards of my three volume book series, The Adventures of Susan Mulane, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire, on my website, www.susanmulane.com. I have journal blogs, more so from the updating time frame of 2019 through 2022. The Ornery PSA on my website, www.susanmulane.com. I had published.
wish, finding A, silver lining and finding B, silver lining, and I'd sent them where I'd sent them. And even with that, which was obviously in 2014, the Dropbox link in 2015, I hadn't ever been asked about my scuba diving. Even with that, nobody asked me. But that would require people speaking with me in truth. And so since nobody asked me about my scuba diving, I didn't have a need to discuss it. There wasn't anything for me to tell. I wasn't raised the way my biological sister was. There weren't people who actually expected or wanted or made an effort as to actually the ways they would with my biological sister. So in reference to me, you cannot look at how my biological sister has been raised and treated. While she may have lived in whatever viewpoint of thinking that we were similar just because we were in the same house when growing up as children, there was nothing similar at all. In any capacity, obviously. And so, Unlike my biological sister, who, well, yes, you could see in pictures how she would speak as far as uploading pictures regarding Facebook as well as about life, um, that's pictures, or in my childhood, paintings, or artistry of whichever capacity, or books that I studied, or work that I had done in comparison. So that's realistically all. In order to take a look at how I actually was raised in the complete difference, you couldn't ever ask Mike or Anna or Patricia if you expected the truth realistically. And there are those who would know by their own experiences. So the only way to ever get that information is to have etiquette and respect and to ask it the one and only because that has not occurred. I am not what some might think. I am actually quite reserved I've, I've gone on about how I am a Republican, which is usually conservative as a description. So being conservative regarding, yes, I can discuss pretty much any topic. I can go into depth levels, uh, pun intended, of pretty much any topic easily because of my background. Regarding my childhood, my teenage years, and where I was born and raised, and the time frame of in the 1980s and 1990s in the tri-state area, with a little bit of time, a little over a year and a half, in the area of Illinois before going to the Army. So yeah, I can discuss all sorts of stuff to various levels and depths. Again, unintended. However, if there is the need or the want or the desire for certain information regarding my scuba diving most specifically, well, that requires discussion. And so while some people might like to wish otherwise, that's just how I am. So my biological sister did not fight to go into the military. I did. I fought to go into the military after having already been invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment and the tests and the essays and the interviews. Similarly to my confirmation graduation classes, while all of the others in that class were willing to talk with one another and have discussions, if they remember correctly, I didn't. 
wasn't one of them. I mean, I was, but I wasn't. So in comparison to the way they were, well, that's the way they were. And so, for example, the two different electives, well, my two electives, were as my two electives were. One elective was with the group regarding my confirmation class. The other elective, I was the only person who took the elective course. That's it. And when in the classroom setting one particular weekend, shortly before graduation, some of the others had asked, my other elective. I had said that the individual was kind. He talked. And that was pretty much it. It was similar to the individuals I would speak with in regards of the students. I always asked. Well, I didn't see a reason to answer. And so I would inform them of that. So, in regards of the year 2009, I had informed the Civilian Recreational School and Lighting Area of people that if the need was actually there, then I would be asked after I got exhausted making attempts to actually speak about. It. So, it was as it was. Still is. So in reference to now, in the year of 2022, I have made multiple attempts yet again. And yet again, it's no different. 2019 at Clear Springs School Park was no different than what I dealt with in 2009, just in a more condensed version. 2020, is fairly similar regarding certain similarities, both in reference to the civilian recreational scuba diving sector, modeling, and what is supposed to be considered the adult consenting lifestyle, all in one. As far as the time frame of 2009 through 2012, 2013, in my opinion, regarding uh, 2021, into 2022, pretty much similar in some ways to Arizona and Washington State. It's a nice time frame. In a more condensed factor. And so um, it's, it is uh, a reality. That's concerned. So while maybe in the reference of Cosimo, Sally and or Joy had their questions, but they didn't ever make an attempt to ask me by asking me on my own, their choices were as their choices were. Similarly to my ex-in-laws, Similarly to people that I knew in person, face to face in person over the years, no different than my biological mother and biological father and biological sister. It's just the way it was. If that actually mattered, then it would actually be presented as such in comparison. And by that reference to me, so while uh, my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister and or ex-in-laws would not pay attention to the fact that they were on a dolphin excursion and it was a snorkeling trip in comparison to my scuba diving, common sense would have been that, you know, only one person to ask. So if the assumption, whether even including McCoy Elementary School, was not to ask me, which they should have, 
If there were those who thought it would be better to just ask, and if my daughter flat out repeatedly told them, no, she didn't see me scuba diving, it was a dolphin excursion, that's their fault because they've needed to accept the truth. In every capacity of. And so, I had informed people that I took my son and my daughter on a dolphin excursion with their, my niece, or their, I should say their cousin, not my niece, their cousin, for this amount of time. They've needed to accept that there is a difference between snorkeling and scuba diving. If you need to know what the difference between snorkeling and scuba diving is, all you need to do is literally Google it. So if there were those who have not been scuba diving, who assumed in regards of, that's their fault. And they need to accept responsibility for those choices. Because that requires that. In addition, if it was really that difficult to just ask me instead, well, why would it be so difficult to just ask me? Realistically, it's common sense. And if it's the estimation that I have, well, what do you ask? Well, what did you want to know? That's probably a common sense thought. Pretty simple. So, in that particular situation, while I have been adamant about safety and doing the best I could for my son, my daughter, and I, and what would have been best would have been my house that I had purchased, that I had created for our home at that time, in the year of 2009 onward, well, that would have been best. However, what occurred was what occurred instead. So, um, then the question is for this lecture, how is that fixed and repaired in the correct capacity instead? Because that hasn't ever been asked of me in quite a few factors. So while well, I dealt with what I dealt with needlessly, and again, my daughter was in and out of hospitals, missed out on time with me as her mom while she was in her formative years. My son missed out on time with me as his mom with his sister, which of course, his sister, my daughter, missed out time with him where the three of us were a family together in one house because of whatever ignorance, hypothetically, regarding other people to lacking the common sense to ask the one and only. Even to this day, I haven't ever been asked. Just realistically, but it would be if it mattered if that truth actually mattered. I believe that truth matters. However, I've met a bunch of people throughout the different areas. And I've learned. So I don't know what level truth actually matters in that overall aspect. So, I thought that the whole truth and only the truth mattered. I have that weird view. So that time, specifically from 2009 officially through to even because of the time frame of my son and my daughter turning the age of 18 years old biologically, from 2009 through 2019, 2020, 
each of them missed out on that, and I missed out on that in a trifecta. And that is uh, the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, the situations that led to me purchasing my house out there, and then my scuba diving. On top of that, me being a mom to my son, me being a mom to my daughter, and me being a mom to both my son and my daughter at the same time. Then, additionally, another trifecta regarding me being capable to teach my son as far as swimming a certain way. Me teaching my daughter how to swim a certain way and me being capable to teach both my son and my daughter how to swim a certain way. That's the facts. Which in turn translates to they didn't get to learn years of my background. So it is as it is. So in those references, I was taught that education is important. Well, if my biological father and or biological mother and or biological sister caused any needless problems to my son, my daughter, and I, and then obviously that would be hypocritical for them to ever claim that education is important. Obviously. Because if education was actually considered genuinely important, well, there was only one person to teach them. So that's the reality. And of course, because of caring about my son and my daughter, well, I couldn't ever teach somebody else's place. Why would I? Correct. So those particular factors in the Freedom is no more than one generation away. Or is it two? Because it those hypothetical situations. So what would have been best for those years, each individual that decided as they made the decisions has that responsibility that they have to accept. So, the most easy and simple route would be to just ask me instead. Hinting is not an option. It's a direct, so etiquette is a direct question with a respect to the individual and in your tone of voice being softer. However, since that didn't ever occur, and whatever hypotheticals, because that's why truth is important. So, those situations, hypothetically, as to those time frames, this is an is, and I'm sure when it comes to my C-Pro camera, it would be wished that I had But because of the facts, most of my own work, the only time that it was on was when I needed to take it. And so that particular type of camera is very specific. 
so if the camera is not on, then the lens is a moving. And when the lens is in movement, you won't have that same clarity. Clarity of certain types of pictures because of certain types of lens. And so just is as it is in writing by particular reason. And what I handled. But realistically, I would think people would actually be thankful and grateful and appreciative in comparison, mainly because they didn't have to deal with it themselves. However, uh, those situations I haven't ever been asked about. So it is as it is. Again, to this day, I still haven't been asked by anyone. Nobody's asked me. And the only way to do so is in a specific way. It is not in a wishful way. So, without certain minimum requirements, I wasn't raised a certain way. I was raised the way I was raised. And so 2019 through 2021, well, that's all you need to know when it comes to my biological father, biological mother, and biological sister. It's no different realistically than my childhood. While they might like to have wishfully pushed a different perspective, the reality is the reality. And so in any capacity at that point, it's one of those there's no need for them. In my opinion, regarding quite a few situations, because either you're actually there you're not. And so it's it's been since 2013 since I've seen my biological father and her biological father. Maybe 2012, actually. It might be 2012. So, and then it hasn't been since 2011 since I saw my biological sister. So, not that I would be aware of, that would require actually uh, in person, face to face in person, and the knowledge of. So if there's ever been that misconception, let me make sure that that's clear. Today, May 22 of May 2022, or maybe the 21st. I know it's the month of May, and that's really all that matters. Oh, it's the 21st of May. So, the 21st of May, 2022. Make sure to go to my website, www.susanmelane.com, which is also www.ladydorybell.com. And make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like my official YouTube videos, and share the link to my official YouTube videos. So, Again, today is the 21st of May, 2022. Where is that aspect at this point in time? So, thanks for tuning in. And if you're going to leave a comment, please do make sure to have etiquette and respect.